Let's check out this question over here. It is a question that is related to both differentiation techniques and Maclaurin's. It started off with a differentiation. So we are given this ln y is equal to sine kx. And we are supposed to show a differential equation, a second order differential equation. So what we are going to be expecting ourselves to do is to differentiate this equation here two times. Differentiating it once, I'm going to be getting a 1 over y, implicit differentiation, dy dx, this is equal to um, cosine kx. And via the chain rule, I'm supposed to differentiate kx, that will give me a k over here. So this is going to be equal to 1 over y, dy dx, this will be k cosine of kx. So for what we have here, we will need to differentiate it one more time in order for us to get a d square y dx square. And if you were to look at what we are supposed to be getting, which is this d square y dx square here, it is an independent d square y dx square. So it doesn't have a y that is attached to it. So I think what I'm going to try do next, although it is not necessary, what I think I'm going to try do is to multiply this y across the other side to get a differential equation that look like this instead because I do know that ky cosine kx is also actually relatively easy to differentiate. So it's not going to um, cause complication to the way that I'm going to be differentiating again but yet at the same time I will probably be able to instantly get a independent d square y dx square. So there's a little bit of advantage here. I'm going to try this. Differentiating this again, on the left hand side here, we will have a d square y dx square, an independent d square y dx square, which was what we were planning to get when we multiply this y across to the other side. Here, we will need to adopt, uh, we will need to use uh, the product rule. So I'm going to go for a ky, I let this be constant. Then I'll differentiate this, which will be giving us a negative k sine kx and plus k. Let me differentiate y, which will give me a dy dx and I'll let the other term remain constant. So here we will have a cosine kx. Let's take a look at what we are supposed to be proving. If I were to be proving that, then this will definitely have to change. This negative k square y sine kx will have to change and I guess this will also need to be changed. I am going to write dy dx outside here so I can combine this k cosine kx together because from what I'm seeing there, I will be getting this here. dy dx multiplied by 1 over y multiplied by dy dx again. And as for this over here, we have a k square. And if you were to look at what we have here, this is a k square and we have a y which means that this this will have to be changed to log y for some reason. So where is the reason? Where is the place that we can see the hint that can help us to change this? I guess it is here because we know that sine kx is log y. So I am going to rewrite this as negative k square y. This will become log y, which is perfect because we are going to be shifting it over to the left hand side later, which will then become a plus k square y log y. It is part of what we are supposed to be showing. As for this over here, I'm going to let dy dx remain. And this part here, this term, this expression here, right, will most likely has to be changed. And how can we change that so that it involves dy dx? And I guess it is from here. Because k cosine kx, k cosine kx is 1 over y dy dx. So this is negative k square y ln y plus this will be 1 over y dy dx square. And now if I were to shift everything over to the left hand side, we will be getting a d square y dx square plus k square y ln y then minus 1 over y dy dx square is equal to 0 and this is what we are supposed to be showing. So this is the differentiation technique part and the question went on to say hence we are supposed to obtain an expression of y in ascending powers of x. This is hinting to us that we need to make use of Maclaurin's because through Maclaurin's we will be able to change any function into an infinite polynomial and this question is requiring us to get an 
and a, a polynomial in ascending powers of x. So applying Maclaurin's to what we have here, I am going to let x be equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, we want to find out what is y. y, it is going to be from here. So from here, y is equal to e to the power of sine kx. So y is going to be e to the power of sine 0. Sine 0 is 0. So y here is equal to 1. And we need dy dx. dy dx is here. So dy dx. This is going to be k times of y, which is 1. Then cosine 0. Cosine 0 is also 1. So here we are going to have a k times 1 times 1. dy dx is equal to k. As for this, d square y dx square. d square y dx square. This is going to be equal to, in fact, it is this. So I'm going to just use this instead of this, okay? It is equal to negative k square multiplied by y, which is 1, and ln y, which is going to be ln 1. Actually, ln 1 is 0, so this is going to be multiplied to 0. Then plus 1 over y, which is 1. Then dy dx, which is going to be k, then k square. So d square y dx square is going to be equal to k square, which means that y, by making use of the Maclaurin's um, formula that we have, y is going to be equal to f0, which is going to be y when x is equal to 0, so it's going to be 1, then plus f prime 0, this is f prime 0, so f prime 0, which is going to be k, f prime 0 of x, then according to the formula, the next one will be f prime prime 0, which is this. This is f prime prime 0, so we have a k squared divided by 2 factorial times x squared, and it is an infinite polynomial, so I'm going to write this, down this plus dot dot dot. It is equal to 1 plus kx plus, this is going to be k squared over 2 factorial and x squared. And all the way until infinity. Let me leave the answer as it is here. Uh, maybe let me just write down the answer here, okay? So, from here, from what we have obtained so far, we are getting this. From what we have obtained, we have already gotten that from here, y is equal to 1 plus kx plus k square over 2x square, and all the way until infinity. So we have this, and what the question wants us to do is to verify this again. To verify this, this time making use of what we have in our MF26, to verify this same result. So let's refer back to the MF26 and let's not forget, this question actually requires us to also determine the coefficient of x to the power of 3. Okay, what we are supposed to verify here is only until x to the power of 2. So as I try to use the MF26 to do the verification, this is from our MF26. So as I try to make use of the MF26 to do the verification, what we will try to do, right, is to expand all the way until x to the power of 3. So that we can get the coefficient of x to the power of 3. Okay, although we are actually trying to verify this. So let's try to, to do both at the same time. Let me erase this. So from what we have, we know that what we are trying to verify is for y to be equal to this, where y, we know that it is equal to e to the power of sine kx. And if we were to make use of what we have in our MF26, then we will be referencing to sine first. So sine x is equal to x minus x to the power 3 divided by 3 factorial. So this will be e to the power of this. I'm going to re-express using the Maclaurin's expanded form for sine x, where x is going to be replaced by kx. So with this, and going for terms all the way up to, to the power of 3, it will be kx. Then after that, minus x to the power of 3 over 3 factorial. So minus kx to the power of 3 over 3 factorial and all the way until infinity. Okay, this will give us the, <coughs> the, the powers <coughs> where sine is being re-expressed. So this will be e to the power of kx minus k to the power of 3 over 3 factorial is 6. So over 6, then we have the x to the power of 3 all the way until infinity. As for the next step, we are going to be looking at e to the power of a variable. And we have this over here. e to the power of a variable, which is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the power of 3 over 3 factorial. We're going to apply that for this case here. So this is supposed to be equal to 1 plus x. I'm going to just 
write down a bracket in replacement of the x here, okay? Then plus, according to what we have you know, in our MF26, then it will be x squared over 2 factorial. So it will be this square over 2 factorial. Then after that, it is going to be x cubed over 3 factorial. So it's going to be this cube over 3 factorial and all the way until infinity. And we're going to be replacing this by this. So this is going to be kx minus k to the power 3 over 6x to the power 3 plus dot dot dot. I should have given myself a bit more space here. So let me write down a little bit smaller here. We have this minus k to the power 3 over 6x to the power 3 plus dot 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 again. Then here also likewise kx minus k to the power 3 over 6x to the power 3 plus dot dot dot. Let me display the question to us again. So we're supposed to use our MF26 we have just used to verify this. Let us try to get all the terms all the way up to and including x to the power of 3. And let's not forget the reason why we are going for x to the power of 3 is because the question actually asks us to go for, to determine the coefficient of x to the power of 3. Okay, but to verify against this, we just need to, we just need all the way up to x to the power of 2. Okay, but let's go for x to the power of 3. So this will be 1 plus kx, I will let it be. Minus this, I also want to keep. So minus x to the power k to the power three over six, x to the power three. Then um, the rest of the terms, I'm going to just leave it behind here. Okay, so it will be considered together with the plus dot dot dot. As for this, as I were to as I expand this, only the first term will get me um, something that is x to the power three and below, which happened to be k x square. Okay, because the next term, if I were to continue to expand this, the next term will give me something that is beyond x to the power 3. Something uh, is going to be x to the power of something that is more than 3. So I'm going to ignore that. So I will only be getting this and it is going to be this divided by 2 factorial which is 2. So divided by 2. And the rest, you know, I'm going to just leave it behind. As for this over here, yes, it is going to be divided by 3 factorial. So it's going to be divided by 6. As for the numerator, if I were to expand the first term, is this kx to the power of 3. And from the second term onwards, I'm going to be getting powers of x that is above 3. So they are also going to be negligible. I'm going to be uh, I'm going to push it, push them all the way to the plus dot dot dot. So it is going to be this. So what I am going to be left with is going to be 1 plus kx. Then this that I have here is a plus k square over 2 then x square. Okay, in fact, this is already verifying what we were, uh, what we have obtained in the first part. But if I were to continue, if you have to look at this, it is going to be plus minus k to the power 3 over 6. And what do we get here? Plus k to the power 3 over 6. These are the coefficients, I mean, these are the coefficients of x to the power 3, which I combine together to get me a 0. Okay, so we, we need to acknowledge that the coefficient of x to the power of 3 is 0 because what we are going to be writing here is just simply going to be this. This plus kx plus k square over 2x square plus dot 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 because this has a coefficient of 0. So from here, we have already verified, verified against the result that we have obtained previously. And from here also, we can also we can then say that the coefficient of x to the power of 3 is equal to 0.